Hello everyone, welcome back to Story Behind the Story. I'm your host Courtney Rowe and with me I have a familiar face, I have Miss Sammy. Thank you so much for joining me once again. Thanks as always for having me. Yes, um, this is your longly way to return. So before we get into your trip to Iowa that you just took, let's talk about you for a second. Tell us who you are and just what you do for the Missourian. So I'm the campus news editor. The news section is divided into two, so I cover all things campus, living in the dorms, academics, etc. And I make sure that all the news content is tip-top shape, and I also write about like the Board of Regents and Faculty Senate and other things. Well, like I said, I'm really happy to have you back. So kind of moving into your story, you just took a trip to Iowa with all of the staff on the Missourian. So tell us about that. What did you guys do? Yeah, so the Saturday before the caucuses, which were on Monday, we took a trip to visit some political rallies, see the candidates, and meet a lot of their supporters to kind of get a temperature of what was going on in Iowa, since it's such an important primary mm -hmm. to the Democratic Party. And so we started the morning. Uh, my group went to see Elizabeth Warren first, mm -hmm. which was like a full-scale production rally with like professional <laughs> lighting and like there was more media than there was Ooh. attendees and every time somebody would walk past the stage like the whole crowd of attendees would like cheer it was crazy and so uh, Warren came and gave her stump speech mm -hmm. and unfortunately she couldn't do the selfie line as is tradition for her so she left her dog Bailey behind Aww. to take selfies with people um, and did you get one I did not yeah, unfortunately we had to leave like as soon as it was over to mm -hmm. move on. But before the rally started, we spoke to a lot of, um, especially young voters. Uh -huh. um, there was a group of high school students there who were kind of getting a feel for national politics as they were moving into that time when they're eligible to vote. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting to see what they thought about the candidates. So who all did you meet? Yeah, so after that we saw Biden, which was um, former Vice President Joe Biden, who was a more packed crowd, so we didn't really get to talk as much there. But after that, we went to a more intimate rally at an elementary school for um, former South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Uh -huh. And uh, we got to meet him there, and we got to, he left a lot of time for audience questions. So it was a lot more interactive rally. And afterwards, I got to shake his hand and meet him, which was really cool for me. So you did a lot. There yes. was a lot going on. Yeah, and so I was kind of there in a reporter capacity. We had photographers, we had videographers, but I was there to really meet the people, take notes on what mm. they said, and get a feel for what was going to be going on coming Monday. So how was it going in there with this unbiased mindset? It was pretty natural for me. I've been a reporter for a, enough time that it's pretty natural for me to just kind of put my reporter hat on and step back away from what my opinions and my preconceived notions are. But it was also nice for me to kind of focus more on the people rather than the candidates and see what they were thinking and feeling and broaden my perspective in that way. What was your favorite part of the entire thing? I think it was, I think my favorite part was the Buttigieg rally just because it was so intimate and it was so interesting to see that it was most, like a lot of the other rallies were not only Iowa voters, but also people who had bust in to support and kind of rally and volunteer and do knock doors for the candidates. But the Buttigieg rally was really truly Iowa voters who really lived mm -hmm. in that county. And so we got to get a really honest perspective from them. and getting to see Pete in a, in a closer way. Mm -hmm. With Biden, it was really far away. And with Warren, she's, she's got this huge production yeah. going on. And so to get to see him one-on-one -on -one and really look him in the eyes was such a unique experience with somebody who is on such a grand national level now. Well, I think it's really interesting because you get that perspective on what each individual candidate's style is. They're unique. Mm -hmm. They're just like little things that, you know, make them them. Um, but what is the current state of the caucus? So the caucuses in Iowa were Monday night, but there was a snafu with reporting. This was the first year that they were using an app that was actually kind of untested and uncertified mm -hmm. for the precinct chairs to report the results to the party. And come around 8.15, 8.30, mm -hmm. everything went wrong. And so it was Monday night and everybody was sitting around waiting for the results to come yeah. in at like between 10 and midnight like they normally do. And there was nothing. There was radio silence from the Iowa Democratic Party. Oh, wow. And so over the past two days, we've been watching really closely and they've, the results have kind of trickled in. Um, percentage of precincts at a time. So it started with 67% and then 75%, and now we're at, I think, 86% reporting. Mm -hmm. But mostly there's been silence on the part of the Iowa Democratic Party, and 
not a lot of people, especially with the campaigns, really know what is going on. And because the primaries throughout February are so back to back to back, it's like one each week, mm -hmm. the candidates have already moved on to New Hampshire. So Monday night in Iowa, they all kind of had to make like vague speeches because no, nobody could declare a victory, really. Yeah. Now we kind of have a general idea of where people are sitting. Pete Buttigieg and um, Bernie Sanders are kind of sitting at the top with Warren and Biden just below them. But for the most part, anything's up to chance. The the gaps between them are just mere percentage points. So with about 12 to 15 percent still left to report, yeah. anything could happen. Yeah, with stuff that close, it's just very interesting. And yeah. I'm glad you were able to go and get that experience in person and that you're able to share it with me today. So kind of wrapping things up, what is in store for you? Like, what should we expect in, for future stories? I'm working on a very particular in-depth project. I Ooh. won't spoil it because I'm a woman who loves mystery. Oh, yes. But keep your eye out for maybe a larger, more in-depth story or even a series from me coming this Ooh. semester. Can't wait. You know how to leave us on edge. Yes. Thank you for sitting down with me and talking about the caucus. And thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I'll see you guys later.